Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and the day has finally come when Scott's replacement side plate has come in for the Long Beach 68. We previewed this reel a while ago, and what we said was there's a broken side plate here. You can see it uh, as you move this in and out. And of course, the reel won't turn with that, uh, that piece broken. So I had to go out and uh, find myself a replacement uh, part. I did that on eBay. And uh, sure enough, the uh, the part has arrived, and uh, now we're ready to uh, to reinstall. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Please note, I'm trying to change my camera angle. One of the viewers out there said they're tired of seeing my hands and out of focus. So I've kind of shifted this as much as I can to be more of a direct look at the reel, as opposed to a side look. And I'm just. Uh, just not sure how it's going to work, but we're going to try. I'm always open for suggestions on how to improve the viewability of my channel. And uh, if, uh, if something can work better, well, I'm always uh, anxious to give it a try. Of course, one of the things I can't change is the cadence of my voice or the accent of my voice. And for those of you that uh, want me to slow that down or speak more clearly, I apologize for that. But that's just kind of a victim of the New York metropolitan area, and that's sort of the way it is. So uh, we're going to take all of the pieces off. We're going to leave the reel pretty much intact, but we are going to uh, remove the side plate, and you do that by removing all of the, the screws first. Now when you do this, note that the two screws on the bottom that I'm taking out right now are smaller in length than the other screws that go into the cross posts. So we'll do that right now. One more to go and the side plate should come off. And this is a beautiful reel. This is a 4.0 size reel with a long cage, but uh, it's lacking the trim rings of the older edition, or, or the Senator edition. And uh, otherwise, this one's in pretty good condition. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clean all of this up. There's a lot of tarnish on here. Uh, but that's not the subject of this video. The subject of this video is how to change out a broken side plate. But if you have the Pen 68, everything I'm doing here will apply to your reel. And uh, you'll do the same disassembly. You're going to remove the, the side plate. And you're going to take all the pieces and parts off. You don't necessarily need to take all of them off, as we'll talk. But most of those will come off in order to access the bridge and uh, and the like. So we just took the handle off, we removed the handle screw, we're removing the star adjuster now and the collar or the gear sleeve spacer. And then we can get to the four screws that hold the wheel in place. So the two on the top are partially threaded screws. The two on the bottom are fully threaded screws. Make a note of that as you as you work. That's what I mean by partially threaded. It has about a quarter of an inch maybe of thread. That's because there's two springs that are located under here and those two springs will be uh, shielded if you will rather than having a catch a point to catch on a fully threaded screw which is the uh, the bottom one. But one of the things I'm noticing already is it's this view has taken uh, my tool tray out of the way and I guess that's okay. Nobody needs to, to look at the wrenches in my tray. You may want to pay attention that I do use a parts tray, and that parts tray is nothing more than the bottom of a fast food container. Also notice when I re release the screws, I'm cupping my hand so that when I push this through, I will be able to catch the anti-reverse dog spring. And one of the uh, folks that has given me a uh, a hint over time was if you're a little bit nervous about finding that one, go get a, a gallon plastic uh, Ziploc bag uh, and put this inside the bag. That way if it shoots, the spring will shoot into the bag and not on your workbench. Okay, we've pushed this through and I'm going to try and discover that spring now. The spring is located in the case. So this, this spring did not shoot. It's right here. I'm going to try and do some close-ups here too, but that's the spring I was referring to. And sometimes under tension that will shoot out, so a good way to, to avoid that is to cup your, your hand. Okay, 
I'm going to remove all the parts on this because all those parts have to transfer over to the other case. And now you get a better view of what's broken. The bearing side here was the shattered piece. And of course, this won't work after that. So next up, I'm going to remove the free spool lever, the eccentric, and the eccentric spring. So this kind of constitutes a complete rebuild of the reel. And uh, if you have your reel in pieces and parts and you don't know how to put it back together again, well, this is a good video to watch. So all of my pieces are in the parts tray now with the exception of this bearing. And I'm going to try and figure out how to get this bearing out. If there is a screw. You can see the hole here. This, so the bearing screws into that plate. And I'm just going to see if I can't grab it. I think that's an 8 millimeter wrench there. That's a 10 millimeter wrench. And that's not going to work. So uh, I'm just going to shut the video for a moment. I'll come back. I'm just going to vice this up and I don't have a vice on camera. I'll vice it up and I'll unscrew that. Okay, so I just kind of broke the screw in the vise. And here you go. That's the bearing that comes out. While I have that out, I'm going to put a little bit of oil into this. And then we're going to just transfer that right over to the new case. So this is a new old stock part. They're not cheap, but uh, you can get used parts on uh, eBay and other sites as well. You can still get one of these from Mystic Parts. Um, but uh, wherever you choose to go, just uh, know that uh, you just need to mirror the condition of the reel. And this reel was in good condition, so I decided to, to try and get the new replacement part. All right, the trim ring is the only thing left on this that you, uh, you can change over. You'll notice that the oil port comes as part of the piece. So you don't need to do anything there. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning. As I mentioned, we'll go back and uh, clean the whole reel up after this video is over. But for now, I'm going to use some steel wool and uh, some chrome polish just to clean some of the tarnish and film off of the side plate ring before I go to reinstall that. And then we'll take you through how to put the eccentric lever on, how to uh, go back and rebuild the rest of this reel. So if you like this kind of uh, video, if you enjoy the hobby of reel repair, or maybe if you're just kind of working on a couple of reels, maybe you're just trying to service your, your own reels during the off season or something, and uh, you want to see more, well, I would just ask you to subscribe to my channel, and that, uh, that way you'll see everything that I post, and you'll have the opportunity to choose which ones you would like to view. All right, so I'm just putting that trim ring back on now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that eccentric. So the eccentric is a little off-centered uh, circular device that's going to be able to flip the, uh, the jack and the yoke up and out of the way so that you can go into free spool. And when you trip it back, it, it engages by releasing the uh, pressure on the yoke and letting the uh, springs push the pinion gear out. And uh, that way it will uh, facilitate engaging the uh, reel. All right, things are just a little bit out of uh, the ordinary here because I've changed that camera angle, but we're going to put some grease onto the shaft of the eccentric. I'm going to dip the tip of this spring, the one that's at a 45 uh, 90 degree angle. I'm going to dip that into some grease just because when I put it into the hole in the eccentric, it just kind of helps hold it there. It's just something I've learned over time. And then the pointed end of that spring goes into the little fork on the side plate, just like that. And we can rotate the spring assembly so that you can clear it. Centered there. There we go. And now we're way out of bounds in terms of where this belongs. This belongs all the way down on the other end. And in order to set that spring, you need to turn this about uh, almost 180 degrees. So I've found from time some of these you can turn by hand, 
some of these you need a little assist and I'm going to look for the assist in this one now I've learned over time just grab this gently if you grab it more, anything more than gently you're going to scar the rims on this but just enough pressure that you can move it and then turn it until you find the balance point and that's the balance point right there you can see that it's not jumping one way or another and it's kind of in line now and what you want to do with that now is turn over because now you can put the pre-spool lever on and you, you have to be a little careful with this because if you push too much you're going to trip that, uh, that balance there and find the screw that belongs inside the eccentric Okay, just finished tightening down that screw. Now you have a functioning free spool eccentric and release point. And then, again, I'm having a little bit of orientation issue here, but that's how that will work now with the spring. Okay, next up then is to take your springs for the oak. Put those in the oak cavity. There's one on each side of the bearing there. And at this point, Time to clean up the yoke assembly. Now this one's fairly clean. The issue here wasn't the performance of the reel. The issue was the broken side plate. So we'll just clean that up. You want to inspect the teeth on the pinion gear. Make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not clogged with any old greases and the like. And if they are, take a hard brush. You got this from a dollar store. You can use a toothbrush, anything, but just run it through there. And if you have particularly stubborn grease, use a, a toothpick or, in this case, a metal, a metal pick to go knock that grease out before you continue. All right, we can go ahead and grease this up. I'm using fishing reel grease for this. I use uh, pen precision reel grease as the product. Not because it's a pen reel, but because it's a fishing reel grease. And uh, I would recommend only to use fishing reel greases and oils when you do this. All right, we've got that set up. While I have a little bit of grease on my brush, I'm going to run a little bit around that shaft of the bearing. Just knocked out the spring. And I do that because that's going to coat the inside of the gear here, and that'll help it slide along a little bit better. All right, take your assembly with the yoke and the pinion gear, post it over the bearing, take the uh, free spool jack, leave it in the up position when you load, and just slip it over like that. So that's a properly loaded free spool jack on this reel. While we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the, the rest of this reel then. Even though we're really talking about the transference of these pieces and parts, we might as well go ahead and do the whole tune-up on this reel so that uh, you can pay attention to how the reel is set. So the first part we're going to do then is we're going to re remove and service the drag washers. And in this case they're a little bit sticky. That makes sense due to the age. I have the dog and the cap washer there. I'm going to use a little There. These have asbestos washers. Notice how thick those washers are. They are asbestos. They don't require any greases or oils. There's two of them in there. And then there's a, a red one below here. And sometimes you can just kind of knock that out and sometimes you can't. So again that little pick comes in handy to pull that last one out. You want to get all of those out because you want to make sure that inside the channel of this this gear is clean. So here we go. We're going to just take a cotton swab to clean it out. And this gear is in very good condition. I want to do one more thing before I go to reinstall, and that's to pull the gear sleeve so that I can take care of the cleaning underneath. There's a pin. It's located right here. And we're going to just use that pick again to push that pin through. And you'll see it start to come through on the other side here. Once it comes through, just like we did with that eccentric, just be careful, but use the pliers to assist you in getting it the rest of the way out. And then you should be able to remove your gear sleeve. 
And this is why you do that. You want to make sure that the gear sleeve is clean in all regards. I'm just going to wipe it off with a paper towel. That's all that's needed. Just checking to make sure that it's not spinning by itself. I'm going to use that uh, cotton swab again to run it through the center of the gear sleeve just to pick up any dirt that was in there. And now we can go ahead and take that grease brush again, put a little bit of grease onto the shaft, put the gear sleeve back on. And if you pulled the pin out all the way, don't worry, it just pushes back in. Uh, I just found the tipping point sometimes and I'm able to just get it to the point where I know that it's going to release itself from that groove that it rides in. When you reinstall that point, make sure that it's inside the ridge here, otherwise your main gear won't go back on. The red hard washer is next. And then we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the pinion gear. We're going to inspect the channels and the teeth to make sure that they're properly aligned. So we've just completed that. I'm going to put some new grease on there. Now, some people like to, to take the gears and put them in the ultrasonic cleaners and do all kinds of stuff. My experience over time is that that's fine. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. Uh, all you need to do is uh, what we did here. If it's clean and just has some residual oils on it, that's fine. If you want to go and, and clean it up and make it uh, look new, that's, that's okay too. All right, asbestos washers, they're non-permeable. They don't need anything. This has got a light coat of grease on it. I'm just going to leave it on there. And we're going to alternate. We're going to, going to go with the round washer, which is called the keyed washer. That goes next. And these, these drag washers essentially will never wear out. I've, I have never seen a need to replace those other than when they become stuck to uh, the metal washers and how to be pried off. But uh, for the most part, very rarely do I ever have to do that. This one's called the eared washer. It belongs in the middle. It has the two points on it. And there's two grooves in the main gear. That's how the, the piece gets seated. And I'm noticing I got a little reflection here from that light in the way we've changed the camera. I think that's probably something we're just going to have to live with. I don't, uh, don't think I'm going to be changing my overhead lighting at all. Now I'm just using a piece of steel wool. We're cleaning up that uh, that last metal washer, so that has a nice smooth side. That red washer that I put on is a hard washer, also non-permeable, so you don't need to, to go do anything with that. And then we just need to load this last one over. And that's the one that I guess got uh, was trapping everything on the way in, or on the way out. There we go. All right. And then we have this little tension washer. It's not flat. It's got a, a bow in it. Don't try to flatten it out. It's not necessary, nor advised. All right, and then we're going to find a fully threaded screw. We've already lubed up the bridge plate. Everything is clean. I'm going to take that bridge plate and insert that in now. And then turn your bridge so that it is perpendicular to its finish and you have access to that corner slot over there. That fully threaded screw goes in. The dog goes on, and now that little annoying coil spring that is the anti-reverse dog goes in. To do that, you want to load it into the one corner of the dog. I choose the, the dog side rather than the, the plate side. I'm going to push that in, and then I kind of wiggle it with my fingertip to make sure that it is properly seated. Um, in this case, it's almost properly seated. And I'm just going to use the spring. I'm going to hold the spring with my finger while I use that pick to just make sure that it's coiled up top, kind of flat with the bottom of the dog. Once I do that, I can re rotate the rest of the bridge over. Let that uh, make sure that the pinion gear comes out. And give this one just a little bit of a turn. I don't tighten it down all the way because I have other bridge screws that I have to put in and that needs a little wiggle room from time to time. I go opposite corners when I do this. So I'm going to go up top with a partially threaded screw. That's the one that's going to go through the springs. I'm going to get that one started. And I'm going to take the fully threaded screw to the bottom on the other side. And get that one started as well. So I'm going to do the same thing up top on the other side. And it's a good time to tell you if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular. And you want to uh, 
if, if you're in search of an answer, then if you uh, leave a note in the comments section, I'll try to answer that for you to the best of my ability. I certainly don't know all the answers. I just got stumped this morning by uh, Rick from uh, Rick's Real Repairs. And I just didn't know the answer. I'm going to try and do some research on it. But uh, if I can answer something for you, I will. All right, next the gear sleeve goes up. Now, if you didn't remove the uh, sleeve here, uh, you could put a drop of oil in there. That's kind of what you would do in standard uh, practices from the outside. That's why that little screw that's the handle screw has oil on it. Uh, when you remove that screw, that's the one that would become oiled. All right, I'm just uh, buffing up the back here with that steel wall. I'll just clean that up with another paper towel. And we'll give it a spin. And that's kind of as far as this video is going to take it. Then I'll, I'll just going to stop it and I'll go back and clean the other things. I'll show you the final result. But that's how you rebuild the side plate for this reel. All right, I'm just going to put that on. I'm going to turn it on this side, make sure everything is working. Make sure that this goes in and out when we trip our free spool release, which it does, right? It's underneath now. And then you would flip it back to make it engage. Everything on this thing has been transferred. We've gone from a broken side plate that wouldn't turn the reel to a perfectly functioning side plate. And uh, this reel is going to be ready to go fishing again. You hear in the background that click, 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 click. That's the anti-reverse working properly. All right, so I'm going to just pause the video here. I'm going to go clean up the other side. We'll come back and we'll show you this thing as a final uh, work product. Okay, so the cleanup's all done. It shined up nicely. I used some Flitz uh, metal cleaner and uh, just some chrome polish on the metal pieces. And reinstalled everything and here's how it came out. So you now have a nicely operating reel. Nice smooth cranking and turning and uh, ready to go fishing again. So Scott, this one will be on its way back to you. And uh, please enjoy the fishing. Everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching during this pandemic. A special shout out to all of our first responders. Thank you for everything it is that you do. And to our essential supply chain uh, personnel who are keeping products flowing uh, despite all of the inconveniences caused by this pandemic. So everybody, please enjoy everything. Stay watching and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.